and the section near Jiu and Guang was key to the defense of the capital. A breach of the wall here would leave Beijing exposed, so the men who stood guard were some of the empire's toughest soldiers and most feared kung fu masters. Today, the town is home to Master Wang Zhipong. Master Wang is a disciple of the revered master Wang Shun Ling. Ling also worked extensively with Bruce Lee during Lee's formative years. And it's the skills that Ling taught him that made Lee arguably the greatest martial artist of his time or any other. The style is called Wing Chun. Master Wong's Wing Chun is built around the concept of efficient, close-quarter combat. Tight, coordinated movements are used to reduce the distance between you and your opponent. From there, a series of knees, elbows, or rapid-fire punches are used to injure and even kill. There's no wasted motion. Because of its close-quarter nature and its efficiency, Wing Chun has been adopted in the West in many women's self-defense systems, which wasn't surprising when we learned how Wing Chun came to be. In the Qing Dynasty, a, a woman started the style of Kung Fu to protect herself. In the 18th century, a local warlord tried to force a woman named Yin Wing Chun to marry him. But Wing Chun struck a deal. If she could beat the warlord in a fight, she could have her freedom. Wing Chun trained in a rapid-fire style suited to quick, diminutive fighters. Her hard work paid off. She won the fight. And the art of Wing Chun was born. Whether you're male or female, the core strike in any Wing Chun attack is the straight Wing Chun punch. Just a straight punch, just here. It's the shortest distance between you and your opponent. To execute the Wing Chun punch, the fighter quickly moves inside his opponent's punching range. With his hands in front of his chest and his elbows tucked in, the fighter quickly rotates and extends his fist. Punch along the arm, then try and get your hand back above your elbow. The punch is then repeated, as needed, until your opponent bites the dust. I feel like the, the breeze whizzing by my face. That's cool. And according to Master Wong, the more relaxed a fighter is, the more punches he can throw. Relax. Relax your arms. It's so hard to relax and think about punching somebody. It's not an easy concept. But Wing Chun doesn't just rely on speed, it uses power too. He's excited. <laughs> oh yeah, that sucks. <laughs> and even through a pad from, you know, this far away, you, you feel a lot of power. The key to this synergy of speed and power is punch technique, punch location, and punch frequency. With your elbows tucked in behind your fist, the energy of each punch is maximized. And because the punch is delivered to your opponent's core along a center line, the more directly that force is transmitted to his body. The effect is similar to that of continually slamming a battering ram against a door. No matter how strong, it can only sustain so many blows before it collapses. I'll tell you what, this punch is very difficult. Staying in that motion and always realizing that he can hit you back. The more you practice, the better you become at anticipating your opponent's next strike. So all these are basically different moves to create hand sensitivity, which comes into play no matter what you're doing. Practice for long enough, and you don't even need to see your opponent to strike him. Blindfolded, Master Wong demonstrated the combination of speed and power that lies at the heart of Wing Chun. See, that's for real. If you break your training partners, you don't have anyone to play with. But Master Wong explained he was actually taking it easy on his sparring partner. At full force, that punch would have broken this guy's ribs. He was fluid just as fast, and he saw his openings, and he was kicking his butt blindfolded. Yeah, and he hit him right in the solar plexus, and we got to see him puke over the Great Wall of China. But one punch, no matter how devastating, wouldn't be enough to survive a fight. 